This is Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz, sponsored by Subway Restaurants. Farewell to the Citrus Bowl. Hello, Daytona Stadium. A new location for state championship games this year. Smaller stadiums hoping to create a better environment for high school football's biggest games. When it comes to high school football in Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia, a select group of teams and players stood out above the rest in 2019. Welcome to the biggest show in high school football. I'm Brett <laughs> Martineau. He's Dan Hicken. Hey, we're all dressed to impress to help honor those student athletes with our annual Blitzies Award Show. Yeah, we clean up pretty well, right? A lot to cover this next half hour from the best plays to the guys making those highlights on the field. But we'll start back in Daytona. Only one area team playing for the championship this year, the Bulls Bulldogs. Hey, it's easy. It's easy. In the first half, it was easy for the Bulldogs. And Cade Frew especially accounting for not one, not two. How about three touchdowns and an 11-point lead in the br at the break? But That's a heads-up play right yeah, here. Yeah, man. Nice pick it up and run it in. Yeah, but that late, counts as like a receiving touchdown, I think. He'll take it. <laughs> late in the game, though, the Tornadoes came to life, scoring two touchdowns in the final few minutes to grab the victory 25-21. to A tough loss, but still a big building block for Coach Toblin and the Bulldogs. We said in the postgame huddle, like, look, who gets to say that they changed Bulls football? Like, who gets to say that? And this senior class has made an impact that is going to affect the trajectory of, of Bulls football. And that you, you, not many people get the opportunity to do that. Well, that game rolls right into our first award. Time to beat our Team of the Year nominees. The Barton Trail Bears have quite the program. Showed it all season long. Running. The regular season with wins over Lee, Mandarin, Oakleaf, and Reigns. The Kings of Clay County, Fleming Island, they too ran the table in the regular season, added a playoffs win as well over Wakaiva. University Christian is next up, started the season with a bag beating state finalist Bulls at Bulls, and behind a freshman quarterback, got within one win of going to the state championship. And lastly, the Bulls Bulldogs, the last team playing from the area, all the way to the state championship game behind first year coach Matt Tobin before coming up just short. Our first winner of the Blitzies is... Oh, so many deserving, tough choice, but congratulations to Bartram Trail. Quite a program, quite a team, led by senior quarterback Chad Dotson. Battled back from a torn ACL to run the undefeated season. A.J. Jones, Eric Weatherly, an outstanding one-two punch of skilled players. The Bears seemingly played everyone from the area and turned them back in that difficult district. Mm. In the end, only the Apopka Blue Darters could stop them on a cold, rainy night at Bartram Trail. Nonetheless, our team of the year, congratulations to Coach Darrell Sutherland and his entire program. Hey, let's give a bonus shout out too to Duval Charter. The Panthers bringing home a state title in eight man football after taking down fellow Duval County squad, Harvest Community job. Well done by coach Kevin Wiley and the team. Madonna once sang, we live in a material world, I believe. Did she? <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> you kids know that? Yeah. Well, we now live in a highlight world. <laughs> We love highlights. Yes, we do. Top plays, best plays, viral plays. You know what else she's saying? <laughs> I'll save it for later. Let's see some plays then. Every Friday night, we get some good ones. Action Sports Jack's Marcel Robinson, he's our playmaker. He shares some of the best of the 2019 season on Friday nights. Alas, the high school football season has come to an end. This season was no different in the sense that we saw big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. Let's take a look at a handful of the best Friday night highlights. Number five, Atlantic Coast hosting Bishop Kenny. Ronnie West takes a handoff, cuts back, and is met in the backfield. Oh, wait a minute. Watch the effort from West, fighting, scratching, clawing his way to the end zone. He would not be denied. As Number four, and I'll just say 30, this, life comes at you fast. The oh, the, the kicker! Hudson the Levine kick. leaving kick returners with something to remember him by. What a shot by the special teamer. That's a last line of defense that a coverage team can appreciate. Number three, Bartram and Pontevedra dives into Brandon Chim, pitches back to A.J. Jones, and there he goes for the touchdown. The hook and ladder for the win. Bears win it 29-27. Number two, Episcopal traveling to face Stanton, but the only thing flying like an eagle is Chris McDonald after snagging the ball out of the air with just one hand. He's off to the races, 69 yards to pay dirt, and our top plays of the year. And number one, Mandarin looking to stretch their lead with a field goal, but Oakleaf blocks it. Joseph Lewis with the heads-up play. That's a live football in high school, folks. He's off and running. Touchdown Mustangs in one of the strangest plays you'll see on the football field. 
What a season this has been, and 2020 will undoubtedly be no different. Just over eight months before striking up the lights for more highlights. In the studio, Marcel Robinson, Action Sports Jax. All right, Marcel, be sure to follow our main sports account on Twitter at Action Sports Jax. See what we're up to in the latest on the local sports. And we actually put a lot of high school highlights on there as well. You don't want to miss it. The talent in the area is really good, which makes this next category a tough call. Action Sports Jack Stuart Weber joins us now to help reveal the candidates for player of the year. One of the best parts of covering high school football in this area is the abundance of talent that goes on to do big things at the college and eventually pro level. With that, we present our player of the year candidates, starting with a guy who won Mr. Football his junior season, Carson Beck. Though this year did not end with a state championship like 2018 did, Beck still put up 19 touchdown passes, leading the Mustangs to a 7-3 regular season record and a spot in the postseason. The Georgia football commit is headed to Athens next year, but he wouldn't mind one more piece of hardware for the trophy case first. Beck is certainly a good candidate through the air, but on the ground, no local running back put together a season quite like Miles Montgomery from the Fletcher Senators. It was a junior season to remember for Montgomery, who compiled 2,127 yards rushing, 20 touchdowns in the regular season. Fletcher coming up just short of a postseason bid. Probably hasn't hurt that Montgomery has a good coach to lean on. Seatric Faison broke the 2,000-yard mark twice as a player for the Beach Rats, now has a key role on that coaching staff. Montgomery will be one to watch moving forward as he starts to compile more and more Power 5 scholarship offers. We will unveil the other two candidates a little bit later in the show, guys. <laughs> Break time on the Blitzies. Plenty of hardware still to hand out, including our game of the year. A lot of good options for this one. That's next. We are the Columbia Tigers, oh, and this is the Friday Night Blitz. Zulai. You're watching Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz, sponsored by Subway Restaurants. Here we go for the win. Same play. The Vikings give it to Griffin. Over the left He's side. In. He'll walk into the end yes, zone. Sir. Has a seam. 25-30. Has some room to run up to the 40. Oh, the, the kicker. Bradley. Gets the handoff, and he's got a hole, and then some touchdown up the middle. Ken Miller, and he just gets stiff arm down, and Wilcox around the outside and into the end zone. Blair launches it down the right sideline, throws That's it up caught. for grabs, and it's caught for a touchdown. touchdown. 45, oh, he did fake he's going to fake it. Somebody he's going to run with it block. down to the 40. There's he's got a huge hole to the 35, and up to the 30. He's still on his feet near sideline, midfield 40, 30. They didn't make the tackle, and he's going to score on the touchdown run. Oh, I like kick, it. Oh, they're going to get it. Great bounce, and Potavidra has oh. the football. He's right through the middle, down to the 30, 25. He's going to score. Touchdown, Fleming Island. And Bates keeps it. Now he cuts it. inside. In. He flips into the end zone, and the Lee Generals walk it off in the backyard. Wow. Hey, we started ESPN 690 on the radio airways back in January when football season came along, an opportunity to broadcast the best games every week. Hey, it was too good to pass up. And with the Friday Night Blitz, we were able to not only do that game on the radio, but provide a live video stream as well on all our social media channels. Over the course of the year, we hit seven different counties. Had the chance to see some pretty good finishes, including a couple that are in the running for our game of the year. We appreciate Kevin Sullivan jumping on board on the radio side as well. Like a battle between Sandalwood and Reigns at the graveyard, it needed more than 48 minutes to settle the score in overtime. The Ron Wiley rolled the dice, went for two, and the win, the Vikings' Jalen Griffin converted it. Reigns celebrated it. A controversial finish at Episcopal as the Eagles rallied from down 21-6 to six to beat Crescent City on a touchdown with four seconds to play. The Raiders answered with what looked like a long touchdown. That included the lateral, but the play was called dead, and the Eagles got the win. Some excitement there. When it comes to Columbia and Lee, you know the finish will be close. But two overtime games in one season, the Lee Generals winning both matchups at home this year as the rivalry grows between these teams. And how about two undefeated teams in St. John's County? Somebody's oh had to go. Potavidra overcame a 10-point deficit with two touchdowns in the final three and a half minutes to take the lead, only to see Bartram Trail go 65 yards in 45 seconds and use the old hook and lateral to win the game. Oh, so many options for our game of the year this season. Columbia down 13 at halftime, scored 21 unanswered. Lee responds to tie the football game up. 
Oh, yeah, we go to the backyard for our winner, and we go with the first of two meetings between Lee and Columbia. One was in the playoffs, won the regular season. This one, the regular season. Tigers came in undefeated, number one in the state, headed for another win before a late fumble forced OT. More defense kept Columbia off the board in their possession before Kale Zara sealed the deal on a plunge into the end zone on fourth down. It was celebration time in the backyard, and it would be repeated in round two of the playoffs. You know, we had a little gutsy over here, man. Um, it was, it's a tough decision. I, I started to go for the field, go back to look, see where the ball was. I'm like, I have too much beef over there. So I like, said, so let's try it. If we didn't get it, we'll go another round. That was a lot of fun. Excited for it. Uh, once again in 2020, ESPN 690. Hope you can join us year-round for the latest on local sports. Join former Jag Austin Lane and myself, as well as Stuart Weber and Marcel Robinson every weekday from 3 until 6 p.m. Dan? In 2017, we lost Ryan Keith after a lengthy battle with Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS. Ryan was around high school football in these parts for 17 years at Eagles View and Trinity Christian. The way that Ryan battled that dreaded disease, though, is what stood out to so many of us. And while we remember him fondly, we also honor him on this program with the Ryan Keith Courage Award. And this year's winner certainly epitomizes what Ryan stood for uh, during his time with us a love of faith, family, and football. Our winner this year is Hilliard quarterback Nate Dowie. The senior quarterback had just played in his first game of the season against Oak Hall, took a hard hit, but stayed in and finished the game. Then in the locker room afterwards, Dowie collapsed. He was rushed to the hospital, underwent emergency brain surgery. The road to recovery, a long one, but Dowie attacked it like he attacked teams on the football field. I mean, all I can say is Thank you for all the prayers. They've helped so much. Thank you for all the people rallying together and helping me out. It's helped out tremendously. What a young man. Say a prayer for that young man as he continues his recovery. After graduation, Dowie wants to pursue a career in physical therapy and, of course, stay involved with the game he loves, the game of football. All right, two candidates down and two to go for our player of the year. Let's bring back Stuart Weber to reveal the other contenders. Thank you, Dan. Some guys put up amazing stats. Other guys provide those wow plays that make you wonder, how did they do that? Some guys do both, which brings us to Jordan Smith. The Columbia Tigers quarterback accounting for 30 touchdowns in the regular season, 25 with his arm and mobility in the pocket, making a lot of plays happen and also resulting in five more scores on the ground. The South Florida commit threw for nearly 2,500 yards before taking his team to the second round of the postseason. And we like to make sure the defensive side of the ball is accounted for as well. Although Fred Davis was forced to play both sides for Trinity Christian. Davis patrolled the back end for the Conquerors as the next in line in a long group of talented defensive backs to play for coach Verlin Dormany. The five-star prospect headed to Clemson for his defensive prowess, but was forced into action at the quarterback position for a good chunk of the season in a fill-in role. Now he heads to the next level and will be one to watch for years to come. So there you have it. Carson Beck, Miles Montgomery, Jordan Smith, and Fred Davis, our four candidates for player of the year. Trust me, it wasn't easy to narrow it down to those. The winner will be revealed shortly. Let's go back to you. Oh, sing along, Dan. We love the bands. And this year, the lead generals were one of many local bands to bring it all season. Drop that bass. And still to come, we have two more awards to hand out. Our Coach and Player of the Year. You don't want to miss that. Hand out some hardware. Coming up next. We're the first Coach Buccaneers. And this, this is Friday, Friday Night Blitz. What time is it? Showtime. You're watching Action Sports Jack's Friday Night Blitz. Sponsored by Subway Restaurants. All right, I want y'all to go out there and I want y'all to be the hammer, not the nail. You hit everything that moves. Come out fast, man. No fear, no hesitation, nothing holding you back. Eight or nine check. If you run into a three side, gang call it. Okay? Eight or nine check on one. What's our goal? Win every one. Win it out, right? Yeah. We're moving. Don't waste no time. We ain't got no more time to waste. Get through it together, overcome together. All right? You're playing for each other and nobody else. And this is a rival football program that wants to come into your house and beat you at homecoming. Hey, stay engaged, you're fine. Go do the things that you've been coached to do and do them at 100 miles per hour with your adrenaline pumping. You ain't got to be a starter to make a play, bro. 
And the play don't care who make it, bro, for real. Send these chunks back to Tallahassee where they belong. Come out, ready to play ball. One, two, three. Let's run. It's really one of the cool things about covering high school football and mm -hmm. Friday night in the Blitz uh, each fall is that we get to get a peek inside the locker room. You can't really do that so much in the NFL and no. the college level, but the coaches, we appreciate them allowing us to take you closer to the action each and every Friday night. Brent Martin, Dan Hicken back on our Blitzies Award Show. So many outstanding coaches pace the sidelines of our area this year and every year. It's a labor of love, trust me. They don't get rich doing this stuff. Not here in Duval County and the surrounding Northeast Florida areas especially. And man, there are so many great stories of all these guys behind us. Like what the former, uh, the big fella, the former FSU star, Sharon Dorsey, did with the Terry Parker program. Daryl Sutherland has built a great program mm -hmm. over at Bartram Trail and maintained it. Matt Tobin making the switch from Ponte Vedra but not missing a beat at Bowles. Uh, O.J. Smalls made the backyard relevant again and does it year after year. Jeff DeSandro, what he accomplished at Ponte Vedra after Tobin left, guiding the Sharks to the postseason. Tell David, us about them all. I know. There's Brian Allen, David Penlin. They, we go on and on. Uh, so many good guys, but only one could be our coach of the year. It means a lot to this community. It means a lot to the, the fans and the, and the, and the alumni that, that came back. Oh, it's a brave new world at Terry Parker, where Sharon Dorsey coached him up for the first district title in nearly two decades. Quite the turnaround in just a year or two at Parker for Dorsey, who turned a 3-7 and seven record into a 7-3 and three mark this fall with a home playoff game. Not easy to do. Yeah, outstanding job. A few more quick facts about the leader of the Braves. Here's a standout lineman at the Bowl School. Three-time All-State selection playing for... Corky Rogers went on to play for the Florida State Seminoles, a member of the undefeated 1999 National Championship team. Dorsey had a brief stint with the best of the best. He was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys in 2001. Certainly something our four player of the year candidates strive for to one day play in the NFL. The time has come now here on the show. One last reminder of our final four. Fred Davis from Trinity Christian, Jordan Smith from Columbia, Miles Montgomery, Fletcher, Carson Beck, Mandarin. All right, it's time. Let's pick a winner. Wow. Ah, well earned here. It's Jordan Smith and the Columbia QB will join us now from Lake City. In fact, our 2019 Friday Night Blitz Player of the Year. Jordan Smith, congratulations, man. One heck of a career, one heck of a year. How would you sum it up your time at Lake City, Columbia, and especially this season? Uh, it's just been great being a part of this atmosphere, being great. It's been great going into high school. Just been great. Um, the coach has been good to me. Uh, I just it's it just been cool to be in because ever since I was little, I've been growing up watching the kid, watching all the guys that were ahead of me. Um, so, like to be here, like actually in this moment, well in the moment that in the in the seasons that has passed, it's been so surreal. So like now that it's over, like I'm like, like it's like it's just time to move on now. Yeah, time to move on. We'll get to that in a second. But I'm just curious, man. Football means so much out there in Lake City, Columbia County. What was it like, Jordan? You said you watched these guys growing up to be the guy. What was that like? What's the last couple of years been like to be the quarterback for that football program? Um, it's been like it's big. It's big, really, <laughs> to be like the face of this program, to be a leader, like in the in, in the community too. Like everybody looking up, looking up to you, and you held, and you held to a certain like kind of like it, it's really accountability and leadership. Like everybody mm -hmm. look at you a different way. You got to move in a different way. Like everybody look at you as like oh like he's the face of Columbia High School. He's the quarterback. So like I got to carry myself different. So really like to be in that position is just like like I like, I can't be like, I can't believe it. Like I'm just happy <laughs> to be in the position that I am now. Jordan Smith, our Friday Night Blitz Player of the Year in 2019. Man, you got a live arm. You can really throw it with that left arm, but you can run too. How tough of a decision is that at times to maybe not run too much or not run enough when you're back there in a football game on a Friday night? Can you say that again? How tough of a decision is it to when to run and tuck it away and use those legs, which is a weapon of yours, but also sit back there in the pocket and make those kind of decisions, either throwing it or running it? I mean, um, th those decisions, like, they just all come at, like, so fast. Because like, if, if I got receivers downfield, I mean, of course, I'm going to hit them. But if I got to run and make plays with my feet, I'm going to do that too. 
I mean, I don't like to run, but if I got to, I will. I like, I'd rather throw the ball than run the ball, if that makes sense. I like to throw the run instead of running through. So, in that case scenario, like, if I got, if I got to do what I got to do, if I got to make plays with my feet, I'll do that. But if I got to throw the ball, I can also do that too. Pick your plays. Last thing, Jordan, big college decision coming up for you. I know you were a USF commit, but things have changed there. Where do you stand with your college choice? Um, I'm, commit, I'm committed right now. I'll take my official this weekend, so I'm going to go down there and meet the coach, Jeff Scott, see, see what he has to say to me. So I'm, I'm sit down there and we're going to have a conversation face-to-face, man-to-man, see what he, um, what he has in mind in this coming, this coming season. And then after I have that conversation with him, we'll just go from there. Good Thank luck, you. man. Jordan Smith, our 2019 Friday Night Blitz Player of the Year. Congrats. Congratulations and good luck in your college career. All right, later this month, more reflection. It's the best of 2019 show, and you'll be able to catch that on December 28th. A lot of highs and a lot of lows. Yes, there are. That's the show we have to bring up the Jaguars. It is? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> hey, and there's it, a lot of stories about the Jaguars, and not a lot of them are positive. You're right about that. Okay. And there's a lot going on, of course, <laughs> including high school football. Thanks for watching the Blitzies. We have a lot of fun doing this show on Friday nights. A big thanks to our entire crew, especially Stuart Weber, who leads our Friday night coverage, and Marcel Robinson as well, and all the other photographers who go chase highlights on a Friday night. Well, we leave you with you two. You, by the way, deserve a blitzy. Your highlights made it into the show. Three different ones. A lot. Thank and you very much. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully you've been watching. <laughs> so we end the show with you, the fans in the stands that keep a, everything electric on a Friday night, along with the bands, the cheerleaders. It's not just the football players and coaches. It's about the whole atmosphere on a Friday night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Sponsored by Subway Restaurants.